Racing to the 2021 Kentucky Derby. And this time, let's take a look at Kentucky Derby Future Wager number one. It's the first of five Kentucky Derby Future Wager pools, exacta and win wagering offered. We're gonna do this in two parts. Today, we take a look at horses one through 11, which is Caddo River through Life is Good. And then we'll take a look at part two in another video, we will also be previewing the Sire Pool later on this week. The pools will run through Sunday here of Thanksgiving weekend. Starting with Cadu River, this is a horse who exits a couple of key races and then picked up the big maiden victory by nine lengths in his most recent outing. In his second lifetime start, he went up against Speaker's Corner, who is also included in the Future Wager Pool. And then in his debut, loss in which he finished second he faced a horse at saratoga which is always a key angle in olympiad who i think is being given a little bit of a freshening after a maiden special weight victory at saratoga he is probably going to be seen sometime at gulfstream park so Caddo river a son of hardspun a nice big victory a 94 brisnet speed figure in his maiden breaker and one of the top 22 contenders for the future pool number one. Now, Dr. Shivel, he was laid up after a four race campaign that started rather early, got going in June, ran in July, then in August. And then after the big win in the Del Mar Futurity, he was purchased before that race as a private sale and then switched over to Mark Glatt, the trainer. So the son of violence is gonna be, uh, last we heard, gonna be pointing towards a three-year-old campaign. And we'll have to see, he currently is not working, and we'll see if he comes out in January or February. Essential quality, looks like he's gonna be the uh, juvenile champion. Eclipse Awards will be announced in January. Won the Breeders' Futurity, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. He's the son of Tappet. You're gonna to have to take a short price if you like essential quality, uh, but he's shown a lot of talent in his start so far. Fire at Will is a turfer that may be going to the dirt. No public record of that yet. He definitely has a turf pedigree with Kitten's Joy on the broodmare side, Declaration of War. Uh, got by with some slow fractions, two races back in the Pilgrim Stakes. Then in his last victory, picked up the win as a long shot, 30 to one in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. I think there's a lot of money to be made on the turf. Now granted, normally everybody gets a little bit of derby fever, uh, but we'll have to see. I think Fire at Will can make a lot of money on the turf in 2021. Getter number is a son of Dialed In uh, out of a Bernstein mare and they tend to like the synthetic surface and also a win at Del Mar and then at Santa Anita. Picked up a win at eight to one in the American Pharaoh Stakes, bypassed the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, gonna be pointed towards a three-year-old campaign. Pedigree seems solid enough and get her number definitely will be given some opportunities to get on the 2021 trail. Highly motivated, big Brisnet speed figure, a 102. That was earned in the undercard of the Breeders' Cup in the Nyquist Stakes. Of course, the track was fast that day, but blistering fractions set by the front runners, and that was one of those fast, fast paces. They ran fast early, and they ran fast late, and they got a big number. So that's usually a positive sign. He's a son of Into Mischief, Chad Brown trains, and Warrior's Reward adds some speed on the broodmare size. The Banker boys own this one, 15 to one morning line, and definitely highly motivated if you like speed and a lot of good angles here. He's got a good sire, uh, lightly raced, but he still had three races as a juvenile. He says he's got a little bit of that foundation built up. And with those three races as a two-year-old, you may only see a two-race prep campaign as a three-year-old. It'll be interesting to see where Chad Brown points him to in that final prep. A lot of times uh, could be back in New York or it could be in the bluegrass as Chad Brown points a lot of his runners to that spring meet and aqueduct and then also to Keeneland. Hot Rod Charlie, the big strapping son of Oxbow, he is going to run all day long. Two turf races, then went to the dirt. He's got a nice juvenile foundation. Five races under him, a win, a second. He's faced some good horses. He ran against, got her number in the maiden race. And then of course, second to essential quality. But that race was a hard one because the fractions were fast and a lot of the horses near the pace kind of got chewed up who were near that pace in that first quarter. 
He was eight lengths back after that and then made his move at the second call, took the lead briefly before Essential Quality won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Hot Rod Charlie, the son of Oxbow out of an Indian Charlie mare, interesting blend of stamina and speed and a nice bargain, $110,000 purchase at the sales. Jackie's Warrior, of course, he was the early Kentucky Derby favorite after winning the hopeful, the champagne, and then as the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile ran fourth again. He was up close to that fast, fast pace and then faded late out of the money, finished fourth, losing to Essential Quality and Hot Rod Charlie. Pedigree is always going to be suspect, not much on the mare's side, a lightly raised horse that didn't have a lot of foals. McLean's music, yeah, he's got a Preakness winner, uh, but overall those foals tend to be lightly erased don't uh, stand up to a lot of training. So Steve Asmussen yet to win the Kentucky Derby. We'll see if he goes two preps. And I assume Jackie's Warrior would be a type of horse that likes the short Oaklawn stretch rather than the longer fairground stretch. And of course that final prep at the fairgrounds is a longer prep anyways, the Louisiana Derby. Keep me in mind, uh, first crop sire Leoban. And of course he did his best running at Saratoga. Keep me in mind, got some nice running lines, second, third, third, and he's still a maiden. You definitely want 50 to one on a horse like this in the future pool. King Fury broke his maiden, then uh, kind of alternated some strong efforts with some other efforts. King Fury, son of Curlin, should improve as a three-year-old. I like that flatter braiding. Uh, we'll talk more about him in the sire pool, but a good bargain purchase for Ken McPeak again. I like the fact that he's got uh, two good races and then didn't have a lot of efforts, but he got some conditioning efforts out of those three mile and the 16th efforts. And Ken McPeak also likes to run at Turfway, Gulfstream Park, and Keeneland. Uh, we'll see where they go. Two for four wins. He seems to be kind of a cut below the top grade one quality. When he stepped up in class, both grade ones, he got handled easily 13 lengths and 10 lengths. But I like the fact he's faced some full fields, a 14 horse field in the Breeders' Cup, and then a 12 horse field in his maiden breaker. And he ran slow early that day. And then uh, the fractions, they came home slow at seven to one. The final horse in part one is a horse you can watch the Maiden breaking video, I did a prospect watch on Life is Good, trained by Bob Baffert, Into Mischief. Of course, uh, Into Mischief, siring Kentucky Derby winner, Authentic in 2020. That's his first uh, really good distance horse. He had a third in the Kentucky Derby a few years back uh, with a horse trained by Todd Pletcher and Audible. So Life is Good, you know, he's got the one race as a two-year-old, that's always a key factor. Of course, he got it late. Now, he is a late foal. He was born on April 22nd. And of course, a $525,000 purchase. Of course, the Colts uh, in that year went for an average of $391,000. So a little bit above average, but definitely not in the top three purchased. He was purchased at Keeneland September and Bob Baffert trained. So we'll see what he does with Life is Good if he gives him two preps or three preps, but he does got the one prep as a two-year-old. Who is your top pick among these 11 horses? Leave a comment below. Part two is coming up. We'll take a look at the sire pool this week. We've also got a preview of the Clark Handicap. Remember, ring that bell, hit subscribe, and share this video with your horse racing friends as we look at the Kentucky Derby Future Wager pool number one.